two experiments, uh, one and two, are conducted uh, to investigate one of the factors uh, that affects the rate of the reaction of aluminum carbonate uh, with excess hydrochloric um, acid. And then we have the balanced equation there for the reaction on the left hand side. Let me just uh, go ahead and write it down. So um, just give me a second. Uh, plus 6 HCl is going to give us uh, 2 Al um, 3 H2O uh, plus uh, 3 CO2 and then uh, we have the setup in in the image given there uh, there we have the hydrochloric acid I think it's been put in uh, slowly and then we have uh, the aluminum carbonate at the bottom and then we have a syringe um, so one of the products here is a gas right so that means that all the gas that will be released as uh, the reaction is taking place is gonna be is gonna end up in the syringe the syringe will be uh, sucking out uh, the gas right uh, so uh, we're given some information for experiment one and then some information for experiment two and then the first question says um, 5.1 uh, define the term uh, rate of a reaction uh, that is the change in concentration of the products or reactants per unit time right um, the change in concentration of the products or the reactants uh, per unit time uh, so formula wise uh, you write it like this uh, the rate of the reaction equals to the change in uh, the concentration of the products uh, per unit time and then 5.2 says uh, using the experimental setup above state the measurements that must be made to determine the rate of this reaction um, so again look at the picture on the left hand side look at the setup um, as i've already stated one of the products of the reaction is a gas right it's a gas and then the time you can always measure the time uh, manually right so um, for you to calculate the rate of a reaction, we know that this is um, we need the change in concentration of the products of the reactants divided by unit time. So one of the things you will need to measure, obviously, is delta T, uh, which you measure manually. Maybe you use a stopwatch or something. And then now the change in products or reactants. Uh, that's sort of like the trick of this question. Uh, because we have, uh, we have this syringe here, uh, on the on the equation uh, on the setup uh, we are going to uh, measure the volume of the gas that is released the gas is one of the products right so that's how we will use this um, equation to calculate the rate of this reaction so the answer will be we need the time um, which we're going to measure manually and then we need the volume of the gas right volume of the gas of which we're going to determine from uh, the syringe uh, syringes usually they have like um they have like uh what do you call this uh they have they already have markings on them that show the volume and stuff so you just measure the time and then the syringe will give you uh the the volume of the gas and then from there you can calculate the reaction rate uh let's move forward uh 5.3 5.3 says uh, using the collision theory to uh, use the collision theory to explain how the average reaction rate in experiment one differs from the average rate in experiment two so if you pay attention here in experiment one uh, they use um, a volume of 100 centimeter cube uh, for for uh, 1.5 mole uh, per, per decimeter cube of HCl and then for experiment 2 uh, they use um, they use a uh, 50 uh, centimeter cube and then uh, the concentration is 2 uh, moles um, per decimeter cube right of HCl so now um, the question is saying uh, let's use the collision theory to explain how the average reaction rate in experiment one 
differs from the average reaction rate in experiment two. So here you can see that uh, here this uh, less volume, right? Yeah, less volume and uh, will mean greater concentration because concentration is inversely proportional to volume, right? And then here we have uh, more volume. So the rate of reaction of experiment two is greater than the rate of reaction of experiment two. Experiment two will take less time because there is more molecules, right? Uh, so to, to put it nicely, uh, the first point you'd say that uh, more HCl particles, right? There will be more HCl particles because the concentration is higher. And then what does more particles give us? More particles give us more effective um, collisions, more effective collisions, right? And then what will uh, more effective collisions give us? Uh, more effective collisions, uh, effective collisions is a prerequisite of a reaction, right? So the more the effective collisions, the higher uh, the reaction rate. So the reaction will take less time. And then, I've gone through this on a video I made um, in the past. Uh, I'll put it up here if it will pop up in the screen. Uh, you can click and watch it. Here it is. Here it is on the top right hand side, left hand side of the screen. Um, let's move ahead. Uh, on that video, I talk about other how other factors affect uh, the reaction rate, like the surface area, uh, the pressure of a gas, and all that nice stuff. And then 5.4. 5.4 says, uh, the average rate of the reaction in experiment 2 during the first 2.5 minutes is 4.4. So let's write that that we have delta T, which is 2.5 minutes. Right? And then we have uh the average rate of reaction uh which is 4.4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per minute right and then uh the question says calculate the number of moles so we need the number of moles of um of what uh let me see of uh of aluminium carbonate so that is uh, let me just write down the formula uh, and then we have co3 there and then we have this three there so we need the number of moles of this uh, aluminium that remains in the flask after 2.5 minutes so after two and a half minutes the reaction is not completed the equation then says what are the number of moles that are remaining so okay we know that um the rate of a reaction is given as the change in the concentration uh, of the products uh, divided by uh, the time it takes. Uh, we have the reaction rate. It is given to us. We have the change in time, the time it takes for the reaction to get to uh, our point of interest. And then now, if we can calculate uh, this change, right? Uh, this change here then we can then be able to calculate the number of moles. Uh, but then even if we were not able to do that, is the information we have. We had to start there and then we'd look for you know other ways of doing the question. I'm still gonna do more questions on this uh, topic. So if you wanna see more of that and how we tackle different problems, subscribe to the channel and like the video. So, okay, let me move on. The reaction rate, it is said to be 2.5 uh, minutes. Uh, and then uh, the change in the products is what we are given. Uh, but then if you pay close attention here, uh, aluminum carbonate is actually not the product, uh, but the reactant, right? Uh, so here we're supposed to have uh, of the reactant, the reactant. And then, okay, there we go. Um, divided by um oh actually i put time where it's not supposed to go time is supposed to go here 2.5 and then here we have the reaction rate 4.4 uh times 10 to the minus 3 that is the same as divided by 1000 right and then now if you make uh 
uh, this reaction, uh, this change in uh, the concentration of R, uh, we get 2.5 multiplied by 4.4, uh, everything divided by uh, 1000. Uh, so let me go ahead and put that in my calculator real quick and, and see what I'm getting. So we have uh, 2.5 multiplied by 4.4 uh, divided by uh, 1000. Uh, that is giving me uh, 0 0.011. Um, so what, what's the SI unit now? We, we're getting 0 0.011, but then what's the SI unit? Uh, we know that uh, 2.5 uh, is in minutes, right? And it's been multiplied by the reaction rate, uh, which is in, what's the SI unit? Which is in mole uh, divided by minute, right? Uh, so the minute and the minutes cancel out. So the change uh, in the concentration uh, in the number of moles is thus uh, 0 0.011, right? So that's how uh, we are getting to, um, uh, how I'm getting to uh, 0 0.011 moles instead of moles per decimeter cube. Uh, number of moles in excess uh, it goes to, I'm going to explain why I'm doing this in a second, right? It goes to, um, 0 0.016, uh, minus 0 0.011, uh, which will give us 0 0.005, uh, moles, uh, in excess, right? So why I'm doing it like this? Uh, let's say you have eight apples, right? And then, uh, here you have eaten zero. And then after some time, um, and now you don't have, uh, after some time, you have eaten uh, two apples, right? So, and then you're like, what's the change? What's the change in the apples that I had initially? You're going to subtract, um, the, the apple, the number of apples you started with. Uh, by the change in the apples you eaten. So here you had eaten zero, now you've eaten two. So you're going to see five uh, minus two, which will give you three. And then the three uh, will be the axis. So the same thing uh, with this uh, question. That's the same idea I'm using. Uh, now let's move to 5.1. 5.1 says calculate the maximum volume uh, so we have volume of CO2 that can be prepared at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius in experiment one. Uh, take uh, molar gas uh, volume at 25 degrees Celsius as um, 24,000 uh, centimeter cube uh, per moles. Okay, uh, we know that um, the number of moles uh, can also be given uh, by the volume uh, divided by the molar gas volume, So right? So that is N equals to V uh, divided by Vm. Um, in this question, we are given a Vm, uh, the molar gas volume as 24,000 centimeter cube per mole. And then uh, the question says, let's find the maximum volume. So this is what we're interested in. And then what we don't have is uh, the number of moles, right? So if we f uh, determine the number of moles, uh, we can then use this formula to calculate uh, uh, the maximum volume of CO2 that can be prepared for experiment one, right? But then to find the number of moles, it's not really complicated because we can use uh, the equation to do so. Uh, we know that um, in our balanced equation, uh, we have CO2, uh, which uh, is balanced uh, with by, by three, right? And then we have aluminum carbonate, which is Al2CO3. Um, and then we have that three on the outside, uh, which is balanced by uh, nothing, which is basically just one. Uh, so what we can do here, uh, this is the number of moles, this is the number of moles. We can calculate the number of moles of um, CO2, not CO3. I'm sorry for that. We can calculate the number of moles of CO2 
uh, by cross multiplying. So we're gonna get the number of moles of CO2 uh, equals to three uh, multiplied by uh, the number the number of moles of uh, aluminium uh, carbonate, right? Uh, that is zero point zero one six, right? Uh, because um, the, the number of moles of uh, aluminium carbonate is 0 0.016 and then the HCl is in excess. So at the end of the day, uh, all the aluminium carbonate is going to get used up. So this will give us, um, let me just uh, put that in the calculator real quick. Uh, that is going to give us 0 0.048 moles. So now we have uh, the N we were looking for here. Yeah. Now we can just calculate V, right? So we're going to say V equals to the number of moles multiplied by the molar gas volume, uh, which is given uh, as 24,000. Uh, so we're going to have uh, 0 0.048 uh, multiplied by 24,000. Uh, mole per decimeter cube, uh, right? And then uh, this is the SI unit of this is uh, we have an SI unit of mole for moles, and then here is mole uh, per decimeter cube, right? So moles and mole cancel out. Uh, we end up with uh, let me put that in the calculator real quick 24,000. We end up with um, 1,152. Um, am I doing that right? Yeah, uh, 1,152 uh, decimeter cube. Um, oh no, I just realized that uh, the number, uh, okay, I, I wrote this wrong. I just realized that here yeah, it is given as a centimeter cube uh, divided by a mole, right? So mole and mole cancel out and then we are left with a centimeter cube. 